Hey guys, um, today I'm going to be running you guys through what's known as the repository pattern in Golang, um, which just helps you to decouple your code from dependencies. Um, so you think of this as a pattern for dependency injection. Um, and in this tutorial, I'm going to keep things really simple. Um, and I might try and find an example where I use this in an actual application um, along the lines. Um, but to start it off, what we're trying to solve here is you having a database. Um, say SQL and this is embedded into your business logic and then you want to swap this out to say be I don't know uh, DynamoDB um, with AWS um, so we'll jump jump straight into it this, this tutorial isn't necessarily jumped uh, aimed at beginners it's more kind of developers that are trying to solve you know bigger problems in Go um, and yeah so that, that's it really um, so the repository pattern the concept is Essentially, you have one, say, interface, which is your all the methods you may need for some type of data, right? So say you have a, like a user database, so a table to store users in, for example. You may have a user repo, which would be an interface. Um, you might have a get by ID method on there. So you would have your, obviously, you would have your context in here, and then you would have your user ID, um, and there, which they could be a string. And then obviously you'd return some type of user which has the ID on it. Um, so we have our user and then obviously we'll have any error returned from there. Um, so the idea is you would have your core repo which again would have a lot more on here. You know you would have add a user and I always try to keep to like a name convention with these as well. Um, so I'd always try to you know, stick to like add, to add something to a repo or to to get data, you'd go get, or you might have like get by ID, you'd have remove to remove something. Um, because it's, it's worth noticing as well, a repository does not have to be just a database. So, you know, there's nothing stopping you from having another service that needs to get a user or needs to use these methods that you might want to have a gRPC repo implementation for, or you might have a SQL server, or you might have um, RabbitMQ or, or something, some type of repository that needs to get a user by an ID and add a user. As long as it implements both those methods, it doesn't matter what it is. So you don't have to necessarily think of this as a database, um, but that's just quite a common use case. Um, so we have our user repo, um, and now you might have some type of database struct, right? So you, what I typically, how I typically name this, and obviously, you know, normally you would have a package called, I don't know, repo or you'd have somewhere in your kind of software architecture you'd have a adapter say if you're going for like the ports and adapters pattern or you have something along those lines that actually separates this code obviously it wouldn't all be in one file um, but we're going to have a type here called database uh, well this type here would be say SQL um, or even Postgres user repo right so what this uh, struct here is going to be is it's going to be a concrete implementation of the user repo for Postgres um, so in here, obviously, you might embed a database. You would have, you know, like a new Postgres user repo function. Um, and I typically always try to return concrete implementations. So you'll actually return a pointer to the actual implementation here. Whereas, you know, you could return the interface just to make sure it's working, say, for testing purposes, right? Um, anyway, this would take in your database. And then here, you would return, uh, obviously, a pointer to the Postgres repo. Again, with your database uh, in there. Um, and obviously, as you guys know about it, uh, when you're implementing an interface in Go, is we now need to populate the two methods. Um, so we'll have the Postgres repo, uh, which should be um, da -da -da -da, at that. And that would have your get by ID method on it. And this would have you know, user ID, string, um, and then you'll return uh, pointer to the user and an error. Uh, oh, and yeah, if you're wondering, I am using NeoVim. <laughs> I know it's a very common question when people see my ID. So what are you using? Uh, but yeah, just, just NeoVim. Um, and user, user, and this will just return an error here, right? Of course. Um, so we now have a Postgres implementation um, of our user repo, right? So now, you know, what you would have typically is if I 
is you would have this embedded into your business logic, right? So you might have now a user service, which is a struct, um, and then you would have a repo embedded here. So you would have a user repo, right? And now we would have you know, new user service. Uh, we would have a, a pointer to the user service and we would return a pointer to the user service and this here would take in the repo. So you would have a you know, user repo, which is a user repo. And in here, you would then embed repo as user repo, right? Um, so as you can guess now, we can initialize all of these um, struts we've just been making. So we would have our user service, which is new user service. Um, and this needs to obviously take in some type of implementation um, of a repository, right? So up here now we would have our uh, Postgres, um, Postgres user repo, which would be a new Postgres repo. It would take in uh, SQL.DB, um, and we can now inject the Postgres repo in here, right? Which now means you could have a method on your service, so user service, user service, um, I don't know, um, add user, whatever right or activate user or something so here uh you would then have your context um like so i don't know you'll have some type of payload so i don't know to keep it simple we'll just take in the user here as well right and an error um but what you would have here is your business logic and then down here you could now access your repo right so you would have us.repo and you would just do a get by ID, you would take in your context, uh, you'd have your u.id, um, the user, an error. Um, actually, we can ignore the user. And we can just return the error here. We'll return nil down here. Now we can call methods, so user.add user. Take in a context, take in a user. And Obviously, uh, we'll just ignore the error for now. Oh, and we have no context, so that'll be context of background. Right, so now what we can see here, right, is we're having some uh, some business logic being called. So we're adding a user. This would have business logic in it. And all we need to do when we want to change database is we can just inject another repository. So we would have, you know, new Dynamo uh, DB repo, and we would then get, you know, Dynamo DB repo, and we could just change that out regardless of having to change any code and business logic. We would literally just have repository um, implementations, right? So it's nice and simple, um, but it just creates that really nice separation in your business logic to your dependencies. Um, and just to cover one other very small area before I end this video, um, is you don't want to return generic, you don't want to return errors for a dependency from a repository implementation, right? So this Postgres repo here, it, I wouldn't want to go and return now an error from this, right? Because obviously, um, well, I wouldn't want to return a Postgres specific error is what I'm getting at here, right? So ideally what you would have is you'd have some type of globally defined generic errors. So error, um, internal error, um, which would just be, you know, an error.new, um, um, for now, we'll just say uh, internal error. We would have like, you know, error not found. So one of the common things, you know, like Postgres has, for example, the database package in, in Go, is you can check if a row, if, an, if you're not finding a row and you can return like a not found error, right? So instead of um, returning the SQL database error type of that, we can now return our generic error, right? So say we had an issue here and we couldn't find the, the, the ID, we would just return return error not found, right? Um, obviously, you would have like some actual code here, and then you you know you would then return that. Is basically what I'm getting at. Um, but yeah, that's 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 pretty much the repository pattern in its entirety. Um, hopefully, it made some sense, and hopefully, this will help you guys stop relying on dependencies in your programs and actually have separation between business logic and your uh, you know your implementations. Um, so yeah, happy days. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you guys later on.